Zampula and welcome to another episode of Face to Face. Today, for today's episode, we have Chundula who is a vlogger and has been entertaining the viewers with different and unique content every day. Stay tuned as we take you through her journey of vlogging. Uh, thank you so much for coming to our show, La. So before that, uh, can you share a little bit about yourself and how you started vlogging? Okay, firstly, thank you so much for having me here. I think it's an honor. And basically, um, just a brief introduction. My name is Tenzing Chudin originally, but I'm known as Chundala. That's actually my house name. And uh, how I started vlogging is basically, I think growing up, part of me, I, I was always interested towards uh, the uh, social media side and mm -hmm. I always wanted to be a journalist. I think that is what uh, really influenced me towards my vlogging career. Uh, what inspired you to become a vlogger and like how did, uh, how did you choose your content niche? Okay, so I think that's a very interesting mm -hmm. question. Uh, for me, what uh, really drove me towards creating my own content is I realized as I looked through the social media posts and Instagram and Facebook posts, most of us tend to look at the better picture of day-to-day mm -hmm. -day people who are living a very good and lavish life and we tend to make uh, comparisons with their life and our life which often instigates our own anxieties and inner insecurities. So why I started vlogging is to show people the natural day-to-day life of a normal ordinary person mm -hmm. that is not always flashy based on few seconds of what we post on social media but just the bts or behind the scenes of a person just doing their day-to-day -day chores and mm -hmm. facing the day-to-day -day challenges of life so i think part of it was towards the concern to promote better mental health as well so uh, uh whatever it might be but there would always be a challenges mm -hmm. so would you share about the, some of the challenges that you face during the vlogging uh, definitely. I think uh, challenges as such, if I have to recall, would be, I think YouTube is still something that is currently emerging in Bhutan. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I go to the stores, some people don't like it when you actually vlog because they feel like certain customers might actually steal their products or they might have the same products. That's what I was told. But I think it's important for people to broaden their horizons and understand that one form of advertisement is also vlogging and they can also attract a lot of customers through the vlogging content because there are viewers and a large audience mm -hmm. there and it's actually a form of business promotion. So I think that challenge and that hurdle was what I used to not regularly but face on a, maybe more sporadically once in a while. So uh, you have shared your challenges, so how do you overcome that or like how do you face those challenges? Okay, so I think what I have learned to do is in some places I always uh, ask consent yeah. if it's okay to vlog and then they say okay and they are more than happy actually because some people understand the meaning behind uh, digital marketing mm -hmm. basically. That is one way and the other way basically I think I would say the second reason would be I think it comes from within if you are insecure and feel like what other people might think or if you're shooting something the crowd or the public might stare at you i think it has to start from within and you have to normalize it then only the larger audience can normalize it hmm. so uh with the change in times like most of the youth are into vlogging and social hmm. media so apart from like uh compared to them so how do you maintain your authenticity and uniqueness in vlogging okay uh, so one thing I would, I think, really emphasize is try to be as original and mm -hmm. as raw as possible because this is the feedback that I get from few of my subscribers that they like watching because they can actually relate to your content. So it's okay for you if you start a channel to not always show the lavish side or to always show yourself going to a fancy restaurant or, you know, to have this aesthetic pleasing video just to... Uh, you know, just to broadcast it out there. But I think your vlogging content should also emphasize or come with a lot of feelings where you actually are as raw and as authentic as possible. So when people watch it, they can actually have some sort of connection with you. Mm -hmm. So I think just being raw, being original is actually what people look for in this fast-paced world. Uh, as we all know that being uh, being a vlogger, mm -hmm. uh, viewers play a very important role. So how do you like... Uh, keep uh, interact with your viewers and build the communities with them okay so basically sometimes I do go live on my Instagram mm -hmm. handle 
and other times in order to know because sometimes i'm confused myself like what kind of content should i post because day to day content can also become a little tedious for some people so what i do is just once in a while i post like a q and a a uh, question on my Instagram and YouTube community page so that's when people input their feedback or their questions and then in my upcoming vlogs i tend to focus on that as well and again go back to my day to day vlogs so that there is some change and there is a mixture of little bit of everything so as you have said earlier that you used to work a uh, work uh, before so uh, at that time how do you balance your life uh, a working life and your like uh, vlogging time uh so basically i think this is what i said in my past interview so i feel like there are 24 hours in a day yes. so how you choose to divide that 24 hours is totally in your hands mm -hmm. so 9 to 5 if i'm at office per se but you always have the time after 5 until 10 or 11 till you go to bed so you can either stay on the bed watch tv watch netflix for 3 to 4 hours and chill but what i which is also good because sometimes self care is important mm -hmm. but what i choose to do especially during during weekdays is just be as productive so in, instead of engaging 3 to 4 hours watching tv or like just lazing around i try to make it as productive as possible mm -hmm. and get on to editing my videos or just like creating content so that's how i basically balance my work and also my uh, vlogging career so as we talk to some of the social influencer mm -hmm. we have heard that uh, the main challenges that they face is monetizing so what do you like to say about this and like how do you monetize your uh, monetize in your uh, youtube and vlog uh, vlogging okay so basically i think that's why we need more youtubers uh -huh. because more the crowd and more the audience and youtube will actually recognize that there in bhutan people are uh, as much as interested in you tiktok as youtube and definitely uh, have a country option as bhutan but for me what i did was i put india as uh, in the settings as my country so that helped with the monetization uh -huh. process and in order to get monetized you need about 1000 subscribers and 4000 watchers within the last 12 months so if you get that you become eligible for monetization and then they still send you the step by step procedure you just have to follow that it's very simple mm -hmm. and give your bob bank account and every 21st of the month they deposit the amount into your bank account directly uh you're already doing good in youtube as mm. as doing as you are doing as a part time so uh did you ever thought about doing it or changing it as a full time job okay i definitely uh anticipate and want to take my youtube career as a full time job as well like globally if you watch around so many of the people they work from home because they are full time youtubers and i think that also gives you the independence to work in your own work schedule and the liberty to actually do what you actually want and follow your passion so i have been actually contemplating right now about taking it as a full time career uh as you have already created so much videos so mm -hmm. could you share us about your favorite moment or favorite uh videos that you have been like uh you have some kind of attachment or emotionally attached to that video okay so i think um i feel like when i upload videos because i don't show much of my mm -hmm. uh fiance like seven people actually want to see more of him so whenever i post about him i feel like that mm -hmm. those videos gain more attention so i always tell him like let's do couple videos but because he's a very private person uh -huh. yeah so i think um uh, because he's a very private person mm -hmm. i think um he's camera shy and i am not so i think that's where the big gap comes between us Uh, throughout your journey as a vlogger so you might have learned some of the lessons which you feel that uh, this mm -hmm. lesson could benefit others so could you share about that okay i think uh, one specific moment i wouldn't say lesson mm -hmm. that i really touched my heart was recently i was going to this mega festival with my friends and there was this 5 year old kid 5 or 6 year old kid she mm -hmm. came running to me it was around 7 or 8 pm and she asked me if are you ajim chandala so i was like yeah Said, I'm actually your subscriber so mm -hmm. I found that really cute and it made me actually ponder and contemplate and think that when I post videos I should make it also child friendly uh -huh. because kids are actually watching my video because I met a mother the other day and she wanted a picture of me for her daughter so that made me also think that I need to be aware what of what I'm posting because this video is not only going to the targeted audience around my age but also to age groups 
elders and also most importantly youngsters and since youngsters are the future of the nation i realize that i should be more mindful about what i should post and what i shouldn't post so that has been one lesson that i recently discovered have you noticed uh, any positive changes or shift in perspectives of your viewers due to your vlogging content okay so i think uh, to illustrate an example there was this american lady who was actually watching my youtube videos from us mm -hmm. and she came to bhutan with a list of chundala list of all the places and the cafes mm -hmm. that i actually visited and we did meet over coffee and she was telling me like how her husband always makes fun of her because she has the list of places i have visited every time she roams around thimphu so that really made me think that actually it's uh, youtube is just not helping my passion and my career growth but also helping to recognize bhutan on a global level where people are actually aware that okay in bhutan we can do this this and also promoting tourism at the end of the day so maybe like they say every drop makes an ocean that is my contribution towards nation building in my own small trivial way so i think uh, that has been definitely inspiring uh, do you have any messages or advices for those uh, youth who are who have already started vlogging or like who is aspiring to okay. start vlogging so if you have any anything to say to them okay so i think all i would say is that if you have your first video out there and you really want to run want to start a career in vlogging don't wait for the perfect video because that's what i did for about almost a year i was always waiting for that perfect video to upload but there's never going to be a perfect video even if you try your best to make it after a while while when you are a daily vlogger mm -hmm. you cannot always make it perfect so it's yes. okay to make it natural mm -hmm. and raw and um second thing is if you are looking at youtube in terms of monetization i feel that should come as a second option first should be driven by your passion because after a while you tend to get really burnt out because <laughs> you have to literally showcase and like make your viewers entertained it's like watching a daily series even yeah. if you miss one episodes or like game of thrones if like you miss certain episodes you don't want to watch after a few days right so you have to have the consistency consistency is key and um, definitely be original and be yourself well the, this brings to the end of our show so thank you so much for coming to our show and like uh, though you have a very busy schedule you just made it up to our show please don't forget to subscribe and like put on today's page on facebook and they even have the youtube channel and uh, every thursday they have the program face to face which is quite interesting it's an entertainment show and uh, maybe you might just meet some of your favorite celebrities and just favorite trend setters and also don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel which goes by the name chindala and see you guys soon bye bye to viewers thank you for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe